Hello and welcome to Shudu Code. In today's video, we are going to talk about facade design pattern. It is one of the structural design patterns and from here onwards, we will be looking at different structural design patterns. So, let's get started. In this video, we will talk about the intro and concepts for facade design pattern, followed by class diagrams and analogy. We will also look at some practical use cases where you can apply facade design pattern. Then we will have a short code walkthrough followed by the summary and pros and cons of this pattern. As I just mentioned that facade design pattern is a structural pattern. That means this pattern is used to structure your code in a neat and clean manner. It makes complex APIs easy to use. This pattern is more of a refactoring pattern. That means that you end up writing complex code or you end up writing code that bloats over time and then you utilize this pattern in order to refactor it and make it easy to use. This pattern or the ideology behind this pattern can be applied to low level as well as high level components of a system. You can apply it in classes, you can apply it in different components and sometimes this ideology is also applied in high level components of the whole system. If we look at the class diagram of facade design pattern, it is something like this. There is a facade class which exposes one or two functions in order to carry out some particular operation. And then there are some hidden systems or subsystems which are required to carry out this operation. One or multiple functions from each of these systems might be required to complete this operation over here. But the client instead of calling these different subsystems one, one by one or making complicated calls, it is easy to put a facade layer between it. There is a facade class which hides away all this complexity of subsystems from the client. So client just calls this do some operation or some function from the facade class and then internally facade class makes calls to these subsystems and fulfills the operation that client wants to invoke. Let's try to look at an analogy of facade pattern. It is an analogy between self-service restaurant versus service restaurants. Let's see what happens in self-service restaurants. When you visit a self-service restaurant, you place an order on a window and make the payment. Then they give you a token back. Then you wait for your token and then collect the food when it is your turn to collect the food and your token number shows up on the screen. You collect your food and bring it to the table and after finishing eating, you go to the water cooler, get water and place back your pl plates in the trash area or in the trash can. Here, most of the operation is done by you. You have to wait, you have to go to three separate or four separate windows or counters in order to fulfill your goal of having a meal. Now let's see what happens in case of service restaurants. You just go and sit at a table and you just place your order, your food and water and everything else is served at your table. You eat, pay and leave. The only operations that you have to do is place order and make a payment. In this case, the waiter who is taking your order to the kitchen and the kitchen is preparing your meal, there might be some mechanisms for your meal to be scheduled at what time it will be cooked, when it will be served putting all of that meal in the trays or the plates and then carrying it over to the table. All of these operations are done by the waiter itself. So waiter in this case acts as a, as a facade to all the kitchen operations which are going in the background. Similarly, whenever you have an API to use, which involves a lot of complex systems or subsystems which have to work with each other in order to fulfill one operation, instead of client calling those multiple subsystems, the client can just call facade class or facade layer which internally calls those subsystems and hides all the complexity from the client. Let's look at some of the practical use cases of facade pattern. Let's say that you are using one or multiple libraries which utilize complex functions to achieve one particular operation. Instead of the client code using those libraries and trying to orchestrate the logic with those libraries, the client can simply call the facade layer. Facade layer takes care of calling those complex library functions. It just makes the job easier. It just makes it uh, easy for the client to just use your complex API, which is carrying out a lot of complex operations. For example, let's say that you have an update function for your application, but in order for that update function to be fulfilled or completed, you have to make a call to Redis, you have to make a call to the main DB, you might have to utilize some values or some calculations from in memory as well. If you do all of this in the client code, it might become very cumbersome. Instead, if you provide a facade layer like update facade or update data facade, which takes care of all these operations behind the scenes. Let's try to go through a code walkthrough and say the same. 
Let's try to understand facade design pattern using this simple demo. This is a very simple demo to create a ticket or a movie booking for a particular user. As you can see here right now in the main function, we are creating the user, we are initializing the ticket system. The ticket system is checking if the movie is available or if the slots for movie are available. If it is so, then the ticket system is creating a ticket. The payment system is charging the card for the user. And then the notification system is sending the email and SMS notification to the user. There is nothing wrong with this code except as you can see if this demo class is the client class, it has knowledge of so many classes and it has to interact with so many subsystems in order to just make a simple booking. If we try and run this code, you can see that this code runs without any problems and it just does whatever it is supposed to do. It creates a ticket, charges for the movie ticket and sends the notifications. Since facade design pattern is a refactoring pattern, we are going to see how we can refactor this pattern using a facade class. Let's say that we create a booking facade class which initializes all the subsystems and carries out the similar operations whatever were being carried out in the demo class. Now we are going to remove all this extra code from here and we are just going to call the booking facade class which just has one, one function create booking and as we just saw in the definition of this class what create booking is doing it's exactly doing the same things except that now all this complexity is hidden from the demo class let's try to run the code and see what happens as you can see the output is same the same operations happen the only change is that instead of doing all of this in some say 10 or 15 lines of code we just achieve that using two lines of code Now think about this, when this facade pattern is applied across complex applications and when there are co complex subsystems, it becomes very easy to use and your code becomes very neat and clean. Also, in some case, whenever the dependencies of these systems are changing or the functions of these systems are changing, the demo class or the client class don't have to worry about that. They can just depend on the facade class, which will be exposing the same function and nobody would have to change this at all. So that is the use of facade design pattern. So that was a brief introduction to facade design pattern. Let's try to summarize where this pattern is used and if we have any pros and cons. There are no specific pros and cons for this pattern. It is just a refactoring pattern which is utilized to clean up code. And I would say it is the simplest structural pattern to use and implement. It is always good to think about your API design as well so that mostly you would not need this pattern but if your API design is complex it might give you a hint that you might want to use this pattern. So that was all about facade design pattern. If you have any questions or comments or doubts please feel free to add them in the comments below. There are some of the links in the description which you might use for further reading. Thank you, take care, see you in the next video. Thank you.